21st Century Entrepreneurship with Martin Piskarik. So when I first started as a freelancer and first started building a side project, my own business, in addition to being an academic advisor at a university, one of the things that I realized was that the small business development center, things like Y Combinator, all of these incubators, they only really wanted to work with you if you were intent on being the next unicorn. If you were intent on being the next billion dollar business. But for people who were curious, for people who were wanting to develop their own skills and really tackle these problems and these industries that were interesting to them, but maybe not make that the sole thing that they did, there really weren't resources. There weren't communities. There weren't ways for people like me to connect with mentors and to connect with other people who had been down the path I was going down. And so now that I'm in a position where I've walked that path, I've failed a lot, but also had you know some successes along the way, that's the type of community that I'm wanting to create and wanting to build out with Howdy Curiosity. For me, I sort of stumbled into entrepreneurship by accident about a decade ago. Uh, I was a recent college graduate and I had my first full-time job. It was in the industry that I thought I was destined to go into. You know, it was, it was in higher education. And once I got in that role as an academic advisor, I absolutely hated the work that I was doing. I was, I was miserable, frankly. It was just not a good fit for me. And I knew that I needed to do something productive that let me be creative and work on really meaningful projects. And I've always been a writer. My academic background is in English literature and rhetoric and composition. So I started just doing some freelance copywriting and content marketing on the side. You know, there were a couple of local small businesses who wanted to do blogging as a way to bring in more customers, but didn't have the time to manage that on their own. So I said, hey, I know a bit about your industry. I'll run your blog for you. I was dramatically undercharging for it, but it was a start. And, you know, eventually I was overconfident enough that I decided to leave the job in higher education that I didn't love and just freelance full time. And I was I was really underprepared at that point. I knew nothing about building my own business or finding new clients outside of the ones I already had. I knew nothing about pricing my services. And really the only skill set that I had relevant to my entrepreneurial journey at that time was the skill set I was using as a writer. So creating the content, great. I was happy with that. Everything else you need to run a business, I, I really struggled with. And so I eventually got to the point where I decided, okay, I need another full-time job. And it just so happened that I saw a company called HubSpot was hiring. And I knew about HubSpot because I had uh, taken a couple of certification courses through the HubSpot Academy when I was getting started as a freelancer. And I thought, yeah, they seem pretty cool. I'll give them a go, maybe do that for a year and then figure out what's next. Uh, well, I've, I've been with HubSpot now for uh, going on seven years. Uh, I'm still with HubSpot, but you know, it was when I started working at HubSpot that my perspective on balancing a full-time job and balancing part-time entrepreneurship really started to change. You know, first and foremost, I had access to a whole suite of enterprise business tools at that point. 
that I had never dreamt of being able to use. And in learning to use those tools, I sort of reverse engineered how their corresponding business functions also worked. So I, I, I consider it giving myself like a mini technical MBA to learn to do my job well. You know, I, I not only learned how does this tool, how does this feature work, but also why does it work this way? How are our customers using this feature and why are they using it in that way and not this other way? And started to figure out, oh, okay, so this is what a sales org does at this type of business versus this business. This is what a marketing org does at a company with a thousand employees. And then this is what it looks like when it's a two person company and so on. And in that position as a support rep, so, you know, just an entry level role, I also had a lot of flexibility to learn both inside the company and in those side projects. So in my side projects, I started building websites for fun and teaching myself some basic front end web development and SEO and content strategy. And then inside the company, I used what I was learning about content strategy to start asking questions about product strategy. And in doing so, and perhaps by being, you know, a little too vocal, a little too annoying about, hey, why are we rolling this out this way? What about this customer segment? Uh, I eventually worked my way up and across the company into the product org, which is where I'm at now. Uh, so like I said, I still have a full-time job at HubSpot. I'm a product manager. I lead our content AI platform team. So if any HubSpot customers are listening, if you've tried out the new content remix feature, that's my baby, that's my product. We just rolled it out uh, this April. Um, but the, the entire time that I've been at HubSpot, I've, I've kept these side projects going. So I've built websites, like I mentioned, I had a full uh, lifestyle and fitness website for a while called Self-Improvement. Uh, I stepped away from freelancing uh, mainly because it tends to not be the right balance of creativity, compensation, and satisfaction that I'm looking for in the type of work that I'm doing. But, you know, between building websites and doing some consulting, I really found my footing in this entrepreneurial space of what I would call like the curious professional. So people who have their full-time employment, who have a job that, you know, keeps a roof over their head, keeps them fed, but doesn't really satisfy all of their, you know, emotional or aspirational or creative needs. And so they want to engage with these creative or entrepreneurial side projects in addition to their full-time pursuits. Um, so I, I share all this to say that, you know, consistently over the last decade of juggling, having a full-time job and a multitude of side projects, some more successful than others, uh, one of the consistent themes has been that it's, it's a big challenge to find the right network, get support, and have access to resources when your entrepreneurial pursuits are intentionally in this state of being part-time or being fractional. And especially for working professionals and caregivers who choose or have to keep their side projects part-time rather than going all in, um, you know, those are really the people who uh, I'm looking to solve for with what I'm building at Howdy Curiosity and, and who I'm hoping to connect with as part of the community that we're building there. Up and hit the road, searching high and low. Never can tell, you never really know. Running out of breath, need you to pull me up. Hell is raining down. So with Howdy Curiosity, it is all about uh, building support and accountability system for folks who are working on creative and entrepreneurial projects in their free time, especially for those of us who have full-time careers. It's the 
projects we pursue on the side that are the most rewarding and can lead to the most significant long-term growth for ourselves, both you know personally and professionally. Uh, but those are also the projects that are most likely to fall by the wayside, get deprioritized, and have us spiraling with questions and you know questioning ourselves about why we started them in the first place. So creating and developing anything alone is a really challenging endeavor, uh, especially if you're doing something in pursuit of curiosity or self-satisfaction and you don't get that immediate validation, be it through someone's you know, approval or affirmation or that financial validation of someone buying in immediately. And when you're in that position of exploring one of these pursuits, so like I've seen people who are, you know, full-time product managers who are wanting to uh, launch side businesses doing something like baking or photography, where they're not wanting to like always be available to, you know, cater your wedding or take photos at your wedding, but they're still wanting to have gigs on occasion. Or, you know, these are people who are like full stack engineers with these really, you know, technical jobs that are very detail oriented, but they also have these really creative, verbose personalities. And so they want to take on something like uh, writing TV pilots or writing novels in their free time. So they have these big ambitious projects that they want to start integrating into their lives. And when they get to work on them, when they get to prioritize these projects, they have that you know internal sense of, this is great, I'm doing wonderfully. But the problem is there's this underlying belief that our side projects should be passion projects. And I am diametrically opposed to the idea of a passion project, because I think when you talk about passion projects, people assume that passion is this like feeling. And if you're not feeling that, you know, heart fluttering butterflies in the stomach, like I have energy, I'm eager to jump out of bed at 6 a.m. and do this, then what you're working on isn't valid. And, and the reality is when you're exhausted from a day job or taking care of kids or an aging parent, like most mornings, you're not going to be leaping out of bed at 5 a.m., 6 a.m. to write that novel or bake sourdough or go take photos of a sunrise. The reality is like these side projects are a type of, of work and that work can be incredibly rewarding. It can lead to a ton of growth. It can help you acquire those entrepreneurial and personal skills that take your personal life or your professional life to the next level, but it still work and it still requires structure. It still requires support. And it often requires you as an individual to be able to assess and understand, okay, what is most important right now? What is most impactful right now? Am I prioritizing correctly? Am I allocating my time correctly? And so with the communities that we're building in Howdy Curiosity, which right now the way that it's structured is we have uh, two communities that are just uh, open for anyone to register. Uh, one's free, one is paid. Uh, the main difference there is that if you're part of the paid community, you get discounts on any books that you purchase from our bookstore uh, and any book clubs that you want to register for. Uh, but both communities get early access to our newsletter and opportunities to participate in Q&As and AMAs with any of the guests we bring in for newsletters, podcasts, or videos. Um, but where we're really focused right now is also recruiting for our uh, creative cohort, private beta, and our entrepreneurial cohort, private beta. And so these are going to be... Uh, very small, we're going to intentionally be very selective by design, uh, especially at first while we're, you know, figuring out the right cadence, the right cohort size. Uh, but these are our, our small uh, cohort-based communities 
for folks who are in these positions to be able to have that community-based resourcing and to create those systems of structure and support needed to be able to go back, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, create those systems of structure and support needed to be able to go back and answer those questions about, am I prioritizing correctly? Am I focused on what is most important? Am I allocating my time correctly? So for me, as the person who's recruiting and leading those cohorts, it's been a really great opportunity to draw on my own experiences as someone who has you know, been in the trenches in SEO and product strategy and had to, you know, go through a lot of these really complex conversations in the SaaS and tech ecosystem around how are we prioritizing? Why are we prioritizing this way? How do we make complex decisions about trade-offs and timelines and be able to bring that in in more of a uh, mentoring and coaching capacity to start saying like, cool, as a group, how can we start to create this, this environment where we can come together for asking the questions that may feel like dumb questions, for sharing our wins, for tracking our progress, for making sure that we're you know measuring the things that matter and that each person who's a part of these cohorts has a way to identify what is actually most important for the project that they're working on and that they have clear next steps so that when that alarm does go off at 5 a.m. or you know when they hit that time block in their calendar, they're not just sitting there saying, I'm tired, I don't feel inspired, I don't feel that spark of passion in my passion project. They're able to say like, okay, I know what's most important. I know what my next steps are. And even if I only have enough energy to crank out 30 minutes of work, I know what that work looks like and I can take those next steps. For me, this type of entrepreneurial community that is creative and supportive, but also somewhat low stakes, you know, within Howdy Curiosity, we don't have this uh, pressure or expectation that you drop everything, put your mortgage on the line, sacrifice your family to go start a company. Uh, I think this type of community is really special uh, and has really resonated with me as I've been working on getting it off the ground, primarily because I think it has so much potential to empower a new kind of entrepreneur, someone who has more of an emphasis on stability which for me, by the way, has been, I think the key to my own success as an entrepreneur is knowing that I can experiment and I can learn because I have the stability of a full-time career. And I, I, I think that that type of stable entrepreneurship is, is really cool, especially for people who have families and especially for people who are in regions like mine. So even though I work for a company like HubSpot that's located in a major tech hub, I don't live in a major tech hub. I live in rural Kentucky uh, in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. So a historically very impoverished region. Uh, our the, the region of Kentucky that I am in, our primary industry is still coal mining. Uh, and for the last century, it's been coal mining and tobacco, uh, both of which are industries in the U.S. that are on a significant decline. They don't hire uh, nearly as many people as they did a century ago, and yet they're still the dominant political and economic forces in my part of the state. And so 
for me, it's really important that people who are in regions like mine and who are in uh, career positions like mine have that freedom to experiment. And I think that those experiments are only more successful when they have the support and mentorship and guidance to uh, make those experiments more successful. You know, for me, I, uh, I once read the book, Someday is Not a Day in the Week by Sam Horn. And I, I immediately fell in love with it. And it's, it's been so long since I've read it that at this point, I don't even think I could give you an adequate uh, recap of the book. But it was one of those books that I read it, I wasn't familiar with the author. And so I just, I, I did what any good millennial would do and I turned to Google. And I looked up Sam Horn, found her agency that she runs and saw that she ran some one-on-one uh, -on -one consulting services. And at the time I had been thinking about, this was probably uh, four years ago, and I was in the process of starting up or considering starting up a, a new side project. And I thought, you know, this is probably way outside of my price range, but I'm going to reach out and just see like, what are her consulting services? What, what does this cost? And when I reached out to Sam, her assistant followed up very quickly and said, you know, let me schedule you a 30 minute introduction call with Sam just so you can learn more. And I expected it to be a 30 minute sales pitch and I hate sales pitches, but it was an opportunity to get on a call with an author whose work I really liked. So I agreed to it. And what happened on that 30 minute call was essentially a 30 minute coaching session. Sam didn't try to sell me on anything. She said, tell me about your idea. What is it that has you interested in working with me? And we spent the next half hour unpacking my idea. She had me getting, you know, post-it notes and index cards and, and paper and pen from my desk and writing things down and making charts and mapping out ideas. And really we didn't talk about the consulting services or price until maybe the last two or three minutes of the call. And I share all of this to say that it was in working with someone who had gone through that process of building out a brand and strategizing how an idea, specifically how an idea for a book can transcend a book and become uh, an actual business that I realized what was possible. And so when I think about the impact that I want to have on my region, on people who join my community, that call that I had with Sam comes to mind. You know, I've been really fortunate to have the opportunity to work remotely for a software company, for a major software company, and to have successes as a product manager in software and to acquire the skills necessary to navigate a lot of those really complicated decision-making, prioritization, business strategy uh, situations that come with the territory. And so now I want to be in that position where I can have that same kind of handoff that Sam had with me. And I want to do it in a way that is accessible and that is scalable and that leads to what I was talking about earlier, which is this really uh, non-risky, sustainable approach to entrepreneurship that hopefully puts people in a very stable position to get something off the ground and to build something that you know either creates that legacy that they're proud of or that you know puts them in a, a different financial position. Because again, I'm in the foothills of Appalachia. The vast majority of the people in this region want to be in a different financial position. So whatever I can contribute to that, I, I, I want to do so. To connect with me and find out more, you can head over to howdycuriosity.com. 21st Century Entrepreneurship with Martin Piskarik. Imagine a space where triumphs, trials, 
and tales of entrepreneurship come alive. Welcome to the 21st Century Entrepreneurship Podcast, a gold awarded journey hosted by Martin Piskorik, connecting with listeners in 95 countries and ranking in the top 0.5% of all podcasts. Join our exclusive community, elevate your perspective, and embark on the path to success.